You and the cast have to be ecstatic about how this show is being received and and heading into your third season. Um, I mean, yeah, it's uh, it's it's one of those things where it's like, um, I guess this is like the junior year, basically. You know, we're three seasons deep, and um, the energy between each season has has changed every year. And I think the excitement now is kind of like this confident excitement uh, between the cast, um, where we're so eager for the fans to see. Um, and um, we're so excited to kind of get into the next chapter of the story for the characters and also for the mystery. Um, so it's just exciting to 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 see it all kind of unfold, because even this year, after we wrap season three, you know, John Griffin is so good at keeping a poker face mm -hmm. about about the mysteries of the show that, you know, for the last three years since working with him, it's been impossible to get anything out of him. But by the end of this third season, um, now that we have a little bit of light shining on the uh, the actual mystery of it, you can kind of tell even he's kind of getting a little giddy and he wants to talk about the underlying uh, uh, answers a little bit. So it's just exciting. We're getting so close. We're getting so close. Looking at Kenny at the end of season one um, compared to the Kenny at the end of season two, what do you think is the biggest difference between those two? Um, I like to think that, and so you've seen uh, the first four episodes of season three. Yes. So, um, and I don't, I don't, uh, we won't get into that too, too much, but, you know, because of the nature of how the show is, we never really know where the character is headed going into the next season. Right. Um, but between season ones and two, I'd always thought this is my chance to, uh, to explore Kenny's more cynical side, side because he's obviously gone through so much and um, he keeps being tested by this place as, as everybody in the town is being tested as well. Um, but the way that Kenny is kind of written is he's just so earnest and he's so eager and he's clearly a way better man than I could ever hope to be because he keeps trying to put his best foot forwards. Yeah. Um, but I think the main thing that's changed between season one and two is um, – just a little bit how disillusioned he is by the place, by the town, you know, like yeah. um, still taking it best foot forwards. But uh, at this point, he's kind of like he's he's almost a little bit disassociated. You know what I mean? So for a character like this, like like you said, he's gone through so much to these first two seasons. Emotionally, yeah. he's gone through so much. For you as an actor, how do you enjoy having a role like that where you get to have this roller coaster of a ride and have all the roller coaster of emotions? Um. I mean, it's, it's like, it's a, it's a blessing, man. It's a, it's an absolute gift. Cause, um, you know, right before I had landed this, 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 um, amazing opportunity, uh, with from, you know, it was a lot of getting very, very, very close to some very, um, exciting and potentially massive projects mm -hmm. that could have been life-changing for me, would have been life-changing for my family, um, and, uh, when you've just kind of been beaten down like that over and over again, right before I had booked from was probably the closest I ever thought about quitting it altogether. Wow. Yeah. And so, um, when it's something like this, where the work is challenging, but it's nuanced, um, and it's, um, and it's deeply, um, human, uh, and it feels so, uh, impactful it's like uh it's a dream job for an actor it's intimidating it's 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 horrifying especially that first season like that first season i had uh we did it was peak quarantine so we had two weeks of quarantine before we got on to shoot our first day on camera and so it was two weeks of me being in this apartment in halifax uh with massive imposter syndrome like oh maybe they picked the wrong guy maybe they don't know what they're talking about maybe i'm not i shouldn't be here um, and of course they scheduled for my first day, uh, of work, um, was me covered in blood, having found my father's dead body and I'm right. chopping a tree and delivering this page long monologue to the great Harold Perrineau. Um, 
so it's like it's it's so intimidating and scary, but it's so rewarding because of those same reasons. You mentioned Harold. Um, the the relationship between Boyd and Kenny has was was very strained in season two. Mm -hmm. uh, we know Boyd had his reasons for not saying what he was should have said to Kenny from the get go. Right. Um, what do you think? What do you think hurt Kenny so so much? The fact that Boyd didn't tell him, or that it's he's like someone that he who's almost like a father figure to him, and and, yeah. and didn't yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, well, yeah, absolutely. Because um, even from when I had auditioned for the character, that was the that was very clearly immediately the relationship um, um, that was uh, that was you know underneath the uh, Kenny and, and Harold uh, and, and uh, sorry Boyd's relationship because you know with Boyd and his estrangement to Ellis at the time and with Kenny stuck in this terrible place in this perilous situation with um with the uh without a father figure to guide him as a guiding light because his own father has dementia um it was very clear that there was this like um they were substituting each other they were surrogate son surrogate Absolutely. father son for them yeah. right and and so there's this uh i think i you know i i've said since season one that like one of my favorite scenes um out of the entirety of our show is the scene when Boyd and Alice are in the forest and they're in the shack, they're outside the shack. Um, and they, they finally have like a moment of vulnerability because I think that it's so rare um, for fathers and sons of color. Uh, and, you know, I feel like even just as a viewer, particularly like black fathers and sons to be able to show that level of like vulnerability and affection uh, and, and, and strength through that vulnerability on screen. And so like all of that to say, like, that is the same thing that's kind of underlying, uh, Boyd and Kenny's relationship. And so when the relationship falls apart because of this trust, that's been absolutely breached, his entire world has fallen apart. Yep. You know what I mean? That was the last pillar that was kind of keeping him, um, standing in town and it just immediately crumbled before his eyes. So it was, you, it was it was really tough. Do you think he thinks Boyd doesn't respect him or see him as I don't know why I want to say the word equal if that makes sense? Um see that's that's a, that's an interesting thing because I have like growing up to like uh you know like I'm a second like a second generation immigrant like my parents uh, are immigrants and like especially like in like Asian cultures there's such a even when you don't realize it, like this subconscious level of like hierarchy in the dynamics mm -hmm. in relationships, right? Like um, me and my dad have a great relationship, um, but there's still a level of like reverence towards him. And I think that that's also kind of implicit in Kenny and Boyd's relationship in that, like, even if Boyd did treat him or think of him as, as an equal, like he can't help but feel like he needs to like, I got to reach up to, to like impress. Yeah. Like my father figure, like I gotta, I gotta, I gotta make it count towards um, our dynamic. But as a viewer, I think that like, I don't think that it's that Boyd doesn't think of Kenny as an equal. I just think that he's just got so much going on. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, like I can't even blame the guy. <laughs> yeah. Can't even blame the guy. Yeah. Um, some of the my favorite scenes uh, in season two, well, one of my favorite scenes was between Penny and Sarah in the sheriff station. That mm. is just gold to me. I've watched it over and over again. Um, can you talk about when you know Kenny knows what 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 she's done, and you know he wants her in the box basically. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, can you talk about his rage towards her, and does he truly want her in the box, or is just him just getting this out and just being able to say it to her. I think, I mean, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head because I think it's that right. Like this, to me, sometimes the town just feels like this whole, um, it's a test. It's like to test your morality. It's to test your, um, um, it's to test like what you really care about. And it's to, to test if you really, you really are the person that you think you are. Um, we see that in, all of Boyd's uh, trials. We see that with Kenny because when they're in the sheriff's station, Kenny is just letting loose upon her 
everything that he feels yeah. while still trying to balance his responsibilities in town. Um, and when essentially confronted with the question of, do you want justice or do you like the idea of my suffering? Um, he ultimately chose the greater good because I don't think that Kenny really wants Sarah to, 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 to face the music because it's, it's not that simple. It's like, it's, it's extremely complicated. And I think that that's why it's so re well written in that even the fact that it's the two of them that are stuck in the sheriff's station to begin with uh, it's pure reluctance for Kenny. Um, but you got, you got to, you got to face, you got to face your demons. You got to, you got to stand right across from the person that took your father away from you. Um, and you got to choose to let her live. Can you talk a little bit about working with Avery in that scene? Um, because again, it's it's just one of my favorite scenes in, in season two. Did you guys get a chance to talk about it before you shot or was it something that you just said, let's just go for it and see what happens and what we can come up with? Yeah, so uh, me and Avery have a really uh, interesting dynamic too because like we're really good friends and um, she, her and I actually worked together years ago on a Lifetime movie. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and and we didn't really have any scenes together. Uh, but there was like this big cast of like young actors. It was like a high school uh, lifetime movie. And um, so we like knew of each other. But when we both ended up in Halifax for from. It's kind of like, oh, we're both kids from Vancouver uh, and we're now in Halifax shooting this TV show. Um, we became really good friends really quickly. And uh, so there's a level of trust and intimacy there that we could access when we were working on something like this. And. I always like when it's something that's kind of tricky like this, I like to go right away with a disclaimer, just like you need to know because, because Kenny is essentially telling her to kill herself. Yeah. And it's like, that's not, you know, that's not nice. <laughs> that's not very nice. And so it's like, uh, I had to like, just right away, like let her know, like you need to remember that what I'm saying to you is Kenny is not how I feel about you in real life. And she's like, I know. And so we were able to just kind of like really fully trust each other. And, and it's hard, like a lot of the feelings that come up and kind of come up right now, even just like talking about it um, is like, there's this very raw and broken person in front of you and to try your best not to like basically cut this really thin thread that's keeping them together is it's like um, it, it's, it's super intense. Um but we got some good stuff out of it, I think. Absolutely. Um, fans were heartbroken for Kenny when it comes to Christy, <laughs> obviously. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you think he still holds a little bit of hope or something with her, even with uh, Marielle in town? Or like one of my <laughs> friends told me, it was like, she, Marielle showed up for a reason. It must be destiny for those two. Um, mm. What do you think about that? Yeah, like... I remember um, putting down in my notes uh, when the Marielle thing, uh, when we got the scripts about Marielle arriving at town. And it's like, I think for Kenny, first, first of all, it's like, what are the odds anybody gets stuck in that town? Exactly. Right. And so um, I think for Kenny, the saving grace or the thing that kept him optimistic or like gave him a little bit of like hope was like, maybe under these super fucked up circumstances that me and Christy ended up here together because we were meant to be here at the same time so that we could be with each other. And the moment Marielle arrives into town, all of that is gone. Yep. Because if, if there was even a chance that you guys were meant to like that, Kenny and Christy were meant to be together. This was why, but the fact that like your fiance, like both of you here at the same time, there was no, there was nothing, there's no reason for me to be here. And I think that that's what ultimately uh, has his, sends his world crashing down. But at the same time, I think is also the thing that he can kind of like rely on as a crutch to realize like, okay, then I have to just let go and just uh, be a super, super supportive because uh, there's still intimacy there. There's still friendship there and there's still a lot of love there. Yeah. But it's like, okay, maybe the love is complicated and different. Maybe it's not, maybe it's more of a platonic love. Maybe it's a more supportive love. Um, 
But I don't know. I don't know. It's just, uh, I don't know if there's still hope. It just depends on what John Griffin's twisted mind comes up with. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's sick fuck. <laughs> obviously, one of the fan favorites um, is uh, Kenny's mom. And mm-hmm. um, by the time this interview is released, they're going to know what happened to that character. Okay. So, yeah, yeah I'm going to put this out after that that episode. So Okay. Okay. Um, then we can get into it. Yeah. So uh, he was obviously extremely close to her since he lost it. I mean, he was already close to his mom, but he lost his dad. So obviously he's even more close to her now, more protective of her. And now yeah. we know what happens at the end of season. Oh, at the end of episode one, mm-hmm. he has to, he, when he finds out, he has to be absolutely devastated. Yeah. 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 It's, um, it's like, uh, and I talked to Elizabeth too, and I was like, "That was a brutal scene." Oh my god, <laughs> that was brutal. That poor woman. <laughs> and she was at when she found out. She's like, she told me, she's like, "I asked Jack and John, like I said, is there any way we could just like make it not so like horrible?" And they're like, "Oh, it'll be very dignified." <laughs> okay. And it's like, and I'm like, and I watched it for the first time recently. I'm like, that's oh my god. That's yeah, it's brutal. That's yeah, brutal. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, man, it's really tricky. Like. uh, Again, I'm very, I'm very lucky and grateful that I have a really good relationship with my real parents. And, um, you know, and I'm, I am such a mama's boy. Um, and so like to go to some of those places for preparation and when we're shooting it is like, um, it like, it almost feels too real. Mm -hmm. Like there's almost like an essence of like, I just want to like, I wish I could just like take my skin off to get this disgusting feeling off of me. Um, especially because when, yeah, when you can kind of relate to the turmoil like that, and then also the real life person that's, you know, across from you, like Elizabeth Moy is like just such an angel, uh, has such an incredible story in terms of like how she got to, uh, becoming Tian Shen for from, um, all of that. Like, it's just, it's, um, it's, it's heartbreaking and, and, and it's, The unfortunate but fortunate thing is this, like when I read it, there was a level of like, there's a level of, you know, after season one and two, and you go through all the things that happened to say Kenny specifically, you're kind of like, cool. I guess my, like my Kenny circle is relatively impervious because there's no way they're going to kill his dad. And then the, when the fiance shows up, but we're going to keep taking stuff away from him. Yeah. Uh, and then they say, yeah, that's exactly what we're going to do. Um, and, and so there's this feeling of like, there's this feeling of like, um, I didn't want it to feel like it was this, uh, how do I put, how do I, how do I put this? Cause this is, this is very complicated. It's just for unfortunately for Elizabeth, but so like beautifully written for the show. Tian Shen is such an instrumental character, not only to the town, to the people of the town, but to the fans. So you kind of have this perfect synchronized feeling amongst the characters, amongst the town, and amongst the fans, where it's like, who's the worst possible person we can take away from this, yeah. this dynamic? Yeah. And um and it's it's heartbreaking across the board because of that, and I think that it's it's why it's so it's so powerful and it's like it's so meaningful because um, she means a lot to everybody, as does uh, Liz Moy in real life. I told her that to me that character was the heart of the show. She was the heart of the show, and you yeah. you hit it right on the head. To take someone like that out that way, mm-hmm. it's going to be devastating for the fans. Yeah, because it's like yeah, again, like nobody nobody has gone through to Jade the way that she has. Yep. Nobody has gone through to the kids the way that she has. Nobody is is literally Kenny's life support the way that she is. And so it's just a, it's a sad day for everyone in town. And of course, it's a particularly sad day for Kenny. I just I think, though, at this point, I don't know how many how much more they can take away from him. I think Kenny might be unless we're really trying to throw him up there with like the Jason Todd's and the Peter Parker's and the John <laughs> Knows of of you know on that pantheon of sad sap characters i think that he might be he might be in the clear i don't know <laughs> yeah. one of my final questions for you is um i know you kind of been paying attention to what fans have been saying about the show i think you play around on reddit a little bit don't go down that rabbit yeah. hole 
Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it gets ugly out there. It gets a little scary out there. What do you say to fans who say, hey, man, we're not getting answers fast enough. You know, what's going on? And I'm trying to tell some fans, like, it's you got to look at the big picture. This mm -hmm. is a serialized drama. It's going to continue. You're going to get breadcrumbs here and there, but you got to yeah. look at the big picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big picture is the perfect perfect way to put it. Um, I think I, I said at some point I was saying that um, it, it kind of feels like it's this puzzle, right? Like it's... Um, Basically, John Griffin like threw all the puzzle pieces on the on the on the floor, and he said, "Hey, this is a beautiful picture, but you know, I don't have the reference picture, so you just sort it out." So season one was kind of like finding the corner pieces, finding the the frame, the edge pieces, and you're like, "Okay, cool, this is the shape of it." Season two was like sorting it out. Okay, cool, these are all the blue colors, all the uh, okay, the white colors, and here's the and you're sorting it out and you're piecing. And now season three, we're finally starting to build in to the middle we're filling the gaps a little bit we're kind of making out the shape of the picture we're like okay cool oh i think this is like a, a landscape puzzle whatever it might be you're starting to see the shapes and the forms um but there's just still these little things that, that are going to make out the entire picture and nobody knows what it looks like except for john griffin i think we're getting closer and closer and closer and especially by the end of this this third season i think um I think I think the theories are going to go from wild to like holy fuck, you know, cuz um we're yeah, it's uh it's it's pretty crazy. Cuz one yeah. one of the things you see from fans that I see a lot on on online is like uh, I don't know if these guys know where the show's going. They don't have an idea what they're doing. It's go it's just going to be another and this is what I hear all the time. It's just going to be another lost Right. Where there's not going to be any real, and you know, you're not going to have a real ending to the show. And I'm just like, right. people just, they've learned just their lessons and lost. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's a, I think it's like this generation, right? Like it's like a lot of uh, the people that you know, my generation, and certainly the generation uh, beneath mine, like the younger guys. Like I think that we've been, you know, thanks to the success of like really great shows like Stranger Things, where it's like they have an overarching uh, mystery that you're kind of invested in, but each season, because of the, 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 the way that streaming has been, you know, has worked and binge watching at the end of each season, you kind of get this nice little gift wrap at the end of the season where it's like, you're satisfying like the, the villain of the season or whatever it is, the mystery of the season, but there's still an overarching thing. Whereas I think our show, um, is playing with like a more conventional, like old school way of like serialized television, like storytelling, where it's like, you're not supposed to, we're going to be out of, if we just give you all the answers right now, that, there's no show. This is the show. This is what we're invested in. And this is what we're excited about. And like, I think that like some of the fans are like, oh, spare me the, I don't want character development. I don't want to hear this. It's like, well, then you just go on YouTube and watch a 30 minute video on the occult and you're going to satisfy that like mystery kick that you're looking for. We're here to tell like really, really uh, hopefully compelling stories uh, about the people involved in this mystery and involved in the, in the, the disparities that they have to face. And I want the fans watching this to, I don't want you guys to think that I'm being negative towards you because I'm not, because there's been some yeah, yeah. Really great things about the fandom. And I, I, have you ever For been sure. a part of something like this with the podcast and the, the theories and the websites? And it's, it's for me, it's lost all over again because I was obsessed with Lost. And yeah, no, the I, from I, the fans is incredible. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's like that's uh, that's what I'm really grateful for because I'm I'm a big fan of um, shows that have massive like fan engagement and fan involvement, right? I'm the type of guy that like uh, you know Game of Thrones, House of Dragons, uh, uh, any of these like big IPs. Anytime an episode drops, you got like thirty podcasts, twenty YouTube videos, every little breakdown, every Easter egg. Wait. Ricky's blinds were like shuttered. It must mean that the town is, you know what I mean? Like, um, like I, I am such a, a dork when it comes to this stuff. Like I watch every video that it's really cool to be on the other side of a, of a show um, where we have that type of fan engagement that, that we have uh, people that are so obsessed and so um, compelled by what's going on in the story that, that I can feel engaged as a fan and as someone that gets to work on the show. Like, somebody that I've been following for years that does, um, you know, episode breakdowns and Easter eggs and stuff like that is this guy on YouTube, uh, Paul from heavy spoilers. Yeah. And uh, 
we just recently connected on 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 social media and i was like dude i'm a big fan he's like holy shit oh my god i watched the show i love it then so um it's cool man it's cool to feel like there's an actual community like we're all chipping in into building out this legacy of the show together yeah and and finally um what can fans look forward to not only with your character but with the show this season i know we kind of talked on something about kenny's mom earlier but yeah, yeah. what else can fans look forward to what else can fans look forward to uh i won't say like specific to i, I won't say i won't say specific to um i can't say that it's specific to kenny more so maybe the mystery to the town and potentially the fate of the town because i don't even really know what it means but i think there's going to be some genuine revelations into um into what some of the roles in town mean like uh i don't know if this is what the mystery of the show is but the way i've interpreted it right now you know some people talk about like oh were they all meant to be there i don't know but there's certainly some people that were meant to be there yeah yeah so yeah <laughs>